have the perfect opportunity to introduce Trevor, who heads up the American Menza group, and his goal is really to uh, strengthen the organization and grow the organization, as well as support human intelligence. And while we're here at CES, I think it's a perfect opportunity. Absolutely. Thank All you. right. Thank you so much. Uh, we're excited to be here, and as as we just introduced, I'm the executive director and CEO of American Mensa and the Mensa Foundation. And we are excited to share with you some information with some of the key partners out there and ways that we're looking to incorporate learning and education into uh, robotics and electronics and how we continue to foster this opportunity to, to grow and, and enhance education. So without further ado, I have the rest of my Esteem panel, come up and join me, and we will get started. So at this point, you've heard a little bit about me, and I want to have you give you an opportunity to meet the rest of our panelists. So we'll have them introduce themselves, the company we're with, and um, a little bit about why uh, we want to crack the coding question. Yes. Hello, my name is Janine Russell. I'm a product manager at Educational Insights, based out of Southern California. At EI, we are known for making kid-powered um, products filled with um, hands-on play. And this uh, year at CES, we're excited to launch Artie, our awesome coding robot that instills a love of coding through drawing. Before coming to EI, I was um, a first and third grade um, teacher. So having known how important it is for STEM and STEAM in the classroom, and now instilling that into products that EI is coming out with has been quite an experience, and we're so excited to show Artie to the world this week. And I'm Michael Blaustein. I'm a product manager at Learning Resources. Uh, we've been in the toy, educational toy space for over 30 years um, in both classrooms and homes, and teaching everything from basics of alphabet all the way through um, well, now coding, actually. And uh, we consider coding to be as, as vital a skill as uh, reading and writing and arithmetic. And um, I've been there for uh, over 14 years now and in the toy space for a, a number of years and in interactive games. Um, and as a parent, I recognize the importance of um, bringing something like coding critters uh, out, which is our, uh, our introduction to preschool coding, bringing the basic foundational skills of coding to kids as young as four. That's awesome. Uh, from, from the Mensa side, while we are not typically in this electronic space, we are very uh, adept in focusing on providing and working on ways to celebrate learning uh, at all levels. And, one of the best ways to do that is from the, the youth child perspective. And so I'm honored to actually be sitting up here with my panelists talking about these different products and how it impacts and celebrates that learning opportunity. So my first question is coding, as we've already mentioned, uh, continues to be a large demand within companies and with various positions in these companies. It's, it's definitely a growing field from a, a job perspective. But why is it so important uh, to integrate coding into the child's learning and development at this stage? Like, wh why, why is this so unique and valuable to start doing today? Um, so, uh, uh, like I mentioned, um, coding is a vital skill for us. We consider it to be, and I know the, the phrase is thrown around, the literacy of the 21st century. And I think when you look around CES, you can see how pervasive technology is. And um, we think those building blocks of coding, logic, problem solving, deductive reasoning, sequential learning, sequential building a sequence, those are, oh my goodness, those are as important <laughs> as, as um, reading and um, something like coding creators provides it in kind of a tangible way. So you've got actual, um, interactive pets that now you're using to build code sequences to accomplish a task. And that gets kids up and thinking um, logically, but also thinking creatively. One of the things that we don't talk about with coding, and I'm sure it'll come up uh, when we talk about Artie as well, is that coding itself is a creative uh, endeavor. When you're 
coding to solve a problem, you're coming up with a creative solution. So there might be more than one solution. Maybe you're looking for the most efficient way, but it's that um, coding as not just computer science, but as, uh, cre as a creative endeavor. That's uh, critical for us to teach, I think. Yeah, absolutely. For educational insights um, with all of our products, especially with Artie, we really wanted to make sure that we celebrate the whole child and the whole brain. So mm -hmm. bringing the left and the right brain together into this harmonious <laughs> product with Artie is really making coding accessible. Um, many parents are intimidated by the word coding, and for kids too, they're set in this, well, I, I'm not good at math. I don't know how to use computers. But Artie is made to make sure that it is relatable, that we have interested you in coding through drawing. So the programming that is, that is embedded in Artie and also with the interface allows kids to use um, programming languages that they are being introduced to in elementary school, such as Scratch and Blockly and JavaScript, and use that to create any code and Artie will draw it. So that self-confidence and also the process of trial and error is so important in this 21st century um, learning in, in the digital age as it builds self-confidence and also more importantly, just growth mindset. The, ever, the evolution of just growing and becoming a lifelong learner. So um, coding is, is, an, is an important language, but for EI, it's making it relatable and also accessible for all kids and, and making sure that we bring out the best in every child. Absolutely, I mean, I find this completely fascinating. I'm definitely not a coder myself, and what I think is really interesting about all this is, is to the point of these various uh, products up here are talking about not only just the technical piece, the computer science, but also the artistic, the creative piece, and blending them together. And, you know, that's one of the things that Mints and our foundation is really excited about is how organizations, companies like yours are developing these kinds of products that are really encouraging and, and challenging and kind of raising the stakes at a, such a young age, but through a child's mind of, of play and understanding and uh, ex exploration that it's not a, a rigid, here's a step by step, here's how you do it, but let, let's just see what you can open the box and do. And um, so I, I'd be, interested to hear a little bit about uh, in just a moment uh, a little bit we'll dive a little bit more but I want to take a moment to uh, have our third panelists actually introduce themselves and in, about their company and the product that they have sure yeah um, thank you so much for accommodating my improvised entrance onto this <laughs> stage um, sorry to interrupt it's no great worries. to meet you both um, my name is Alex Klein uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Cano uh, we do build it yourself technology for all ages all over the world uh, we created the first uh, computer that you make and code yourself bring it to life, it's a real tablet, you follow step-by-step -step storybooks, you make music, art, games, Minecraft, you share your creations uh, to our online platform, Cano World. Uh, and uh, you know, we've done a whole range of devices, apps that let you hack Minecraft, make music, um, dive into the command line and go on a terminal quest inside the brain of your PC. Uh, our point of view is the first personal computing revolution was about making it easy for anyone to use a computer. And now we all have these in our pockets. That was once a niche skill. The next personal computing revolution is about making it simple and fun for anyone to understand and make computing. We start with kids, but it's really for anyone. Um, last bit, most recently this year, uh, we created the uh, first ever Harry Potter coding kit uh, in partnership with Warner Brothers. Uh, you build a wand with accelerometers, magnetometers, and gyroscopes inside. You hook it up to any app on our computer or others, and you cast spells. You can cast 200 spells and then code your own. On Christmas Day this year, uh, every second a spell uh, invented by a beginner uh, was uploaded and shared uh, to Cano World. So I'm an ex-journalist. It's an honor to be here with, with, with all of you. Um, never thought I'd end up here. And um, our goal is to demystify technology. Um, and uh, I think these products and as you said, this approach is, is going to make a lot of progress towards solving big social problems in the next few years as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So kind of taking a, a lead from that, and, and my next question really is, we, we've kind of skimmed the surface of what these products can do and some of the value, but uh, could you go a little deeper and explain a little bit of what your products are, as, as they're designed, what we kind of 
are hoping that they're going, the, our children, the youth are going to learn by using some of these things. Like, sure. uh, we've talked a little bit about creativity and using their mm -hmm. mind and some problem solving, but are there others that really, that are maybe like secondary that come out just because of using this? Yeah. So something like coding creators, um, when, we, when we talk about teaching coding to preschoolers, um, just like there are different ways and different appropriate ways to teach reading and arithmetic um, to different age groups, there are different ways to teach uh, concepts like coding um, to um, a four-year-old versus a six-year-old versus an eight-year-old. And the approach we wanted to take with coding critters was make it very tangible, um, give you an interactive pet that you can really engage with. And um, each coding critter comes with a storybook. And the storybook sets up different coding challenges in in um, their world. So the coding critters themselves come with interactive pieces, uh, a playhouse, a little mini pet that they can um, play hide and seek with, um, things that will um, help enhance uh, the overall play. And we find that preschoolers are really engaged when they have a character like Ranger the Dog or Scamper the Cat or Rumble the Dinosaur that has a lot of personality and a lot of um, things that they can grasp onto. There's a full separate mode in, in the critters that's a play mode where they're even more like interactive pets where you can uh, have them sing and dance and play around and put them in guard mode, all sorts of cute stuff. But we find that when um, you're doing task-oriented things like code this, uh, this robot to get from point A to point B, it really helps for a preschooler to have that, um, that sort of story and character aspect for them to grab onto. Did that answer your question? It did, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Other thoughts? Well, could you repeat the question? <laughs> so the, the, the question was, we talked a little bit high level as you were introducing your products about what overall we expect them to learn or engage with the product. Uh, I'm curious as to what other learning capabilities you either expect from it primarily or um, secondary just by using the product. What other things does it teach? We want to be surprised. We want to. Oh create a tool that a beginner somewhere in an unexpected place um, repurposes and reshapes to meet their own ends. So for example, with the first Kano computer kit, uh, we had a young man named uh, Kelvin Doe in Sierra Leone. Uh, when he was 13, uh, he started pulling pieces of uh, electronic componentry um, out of the trash uh, in the streets uh, outside where he lives in Freetown. Uh, he got a Kano computer kit in w one of the early Kickstarter campaigns. Um, and he, he went to an internet cafe, looks up what each of these components did. Uh, using the Kano and the components he had found, uh, by age 14, he'd hacked together a radio station and he was broadcasting tracks across his village under the name DJ Focus. Uh, we had yeah, a girl named Lert in Kosovo hook the Kano computer kit up to some servo motors and solar panels, use them to track the position of the sun across the sky and get more energy into the panels. We had a family in Oklahoma build uh, time -lapse, a time-lapse camera and capture uh, flowers blooming with these beautiful uh, animated GIFs. Um, and you know, to date, there are almost a million shared applications uh, created from Kano kits, spells, stories, songs, um, you know, beautiful generative artworks that go blue and black as the sun rises and falls outside. So oh. I, I think with t our, our approach is to build tools, not just toys. We want the next generation and how many people here are parents or have young people in their life? Like, and, and how many of those young people play Fortnite? <laughs> or, or, or Roblox? <laughs> That's you. Or Minecraft? So what's the common thread here? Like, plastic economics uh, are not enough for this incredibly savvy next generation that won't remember a time before the internet. They want platforms, they want social spaces, they want creative mm -hmm. tools, they want to make what they play with. Um, and so that's our approach, build a computer company for that uh, instinct, uh, that desire to shape, not just use. Um, so to answer your question, I, I guess, the learning outcome we like to see is mastery, like a classic video mm -hmm. game, that, that sense of um, pride of authorship. And that's why all those platforms I just mentioned have been so successful, because um, the, the people who play them have the ability to surprise the makers and one another. Yeah. Absolutely. For Artie, um, I think the main thing is celebrating the process and really embracing the imperfection and the trial and error in coding. Um, I'll tell you a little story. When I was a third grade teacher, when we were doing a scratch in our classroom, um, a young student had, had 
was really frustrated in making her code. And when I went to her, her desktop, she had nothing on her screen. And when I went and clicked undid, 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 and she actually had coded a ton of stuff. <laughs> and the outcome was, was brilliant, but she was more um, focused on what the, the final product was. And that was unfortunate. And I think it's so important to really celebrate that whole trial and error. Yeah. How can we make sure that our kids are confident in knowing that there are going to be mistakes and roadblocks in between, not just in coding, but in life and in and, and their entire learning career and celebrate that and be proud of that entire process. So Artie does that in a, in a brilliant way that not only can you see your codes, but your outcome is physical. You could see the drawing product right there. And if he does make a mistake, it's okay. Let's, let's find out what it is, let's go back, let's redo it, and let's make the right code that we were anticipating. Um, also, building the creativity, adding that A in STEAM, I think that the arts are incredibly important in, in, in the STEM. So um, although STEM is, is a full force, I think you really need that A for that to move along because it makes it, again, accessible. Um, a lot of kids connect to the arts, especially through music and with hands-on. Um, a lot of students, if you think about the multiple intelligence, um, kinesthetic, hands-on learning, and also just visually Stimulating toys and products allow kids to feel engaged in their learning. So Artie has the freeform remote control play too, so they can get familiar with how Artie moves and then connect that to their coding. So having Artie becoming that advocate for confidence and, and trial and error is, is what we're really proud of. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. If I can just tag on to that, one of the outcomes with um, a product like Coding Critter, or a product line like Coding Critters, or um, Botley, the coding robot that we introduced last year. Oh, you um, guys are Botley. Yes, we are. <laughs> Botley's a sweet product. Thank yeah. you, thanks very much. Yeah. Um, so is that, by the way. Uh, so uh, the, what we're looking for from an outcome standpoint is uh, creative problem solvers for the 21st century. My daughter is in a, uh, a program called Future Problem Solvers, and um, she, I, I sound a lot of the ideas and we all sound a lot of the ideas off of our, our own children, but um, a lot of the um, coding challenges in a product like Botley or in Coding Critters, uh, we work with educators in our own family to get them to think of what would be a really unique way to set up a challenge for these pets and put it in um, some of the print material in it. So we're looking to build that, those kind of 21st century skills of um, creativity, logic, problem solving. Absolutely. So Granted, we, you know, as a panel, you have time to prep and share ideas. So we've talked about some of this before, but as I'm listening, and Michael, you just kind of hit on summarizing kind of what I was just taking immediately from this conversation, uh, from that question, is, is looking at problem solving in a new way, using technology tools. I think as, as an employer, um, and one of the things that we see a lot uh, as we talk with other, other companies is problem solving has come a little bit of a, a lost arc. We've it used technology so much yeah. to help make things so easy for us. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't remember the last time I actually used anything but Google to find something. Um, but what I love about this, all these products and what we're talking about is how it's stimulating that mind, that problem solving mind in a 21st century way to make it more creative. And what fascinates me and what I'm most excited about as I'm listening to this is how, how this will eventually translate down the road, like what are these yes. youth who are learning mm -hmm. these products going to do? What is the new things that they're going to eventually be launching and talking about at this show that take us even further in the, the technology and development level? Like the, the idea of seeing that growth, that 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 life cycle is going to be phenomenal. And, and I mean, it, it, I'm trying to not jump out of my seat out of excitement here because I do think the this, Tom Cruise jump yes, on the couch. I'm like, <laughs> this is awesome. Um, so. Could I, it, could I jump on that? Absolutely. Like, I, I think there's, there's obviously a sense of cynicism in some quarters mm -hmm. in our society at the moment, right? Um, but it is an incredible time to be alive, to your point. You know, you can get uh, computers that are exponentially more powerful than the mainframe that took mm -hmm. Apollo to the moon for less than the price of a curling iron. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get 4G internet on Mount Everest. Most of the world's software now is based on open source. Mm -hmm. So you can share ideas in a collaborative um, 
and generative way. Um, the challenge that we have is this like point and click on demand, everything's easy, someone else solve it for me mm -hmm. mentality, which is inimical to democracy, right? You know, the big challenge is all that power and that potential that we were just talking about and what the kids of the CESs of the future will have access to is bottled up. There are 20 billion connected devices in the world, uh, less than 50 million people, and you guys know this well, according to IDC can program. So I, I used to report on uh, Wall Street and the financial crisis and the, um, the criticism of the 1%. Those who understand and write technology today aren't just a 1%, they're a 1% of 1%. Mm. Um, never has so much power and influence in our society been held by, by so few. So our, our job is not to necessarily just like as much as I, and we all want you to buy our products and give them to your kids, <laughs> like it's n not just buying a product is gonna solve this, it's also like the mentality of optimism, this sense that there are so many elements of our modern world that we and our kids can work together to combine uh, creatively, to solve problems ourselves, to take some of the power back from Facebook and Google and Amazon because they shouldn't, be the only ones shaping our social infrastructure. We have a role to play. This is a democracy, uh, you know, and writing that, um, writing that new code base for society together. You know, that, that's, I think, at the core of a, of a lot of these products that you see today. Like, yes, it's really fun, but it's also about creating a future where everyone can participate rather than just very few people. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. I, wanna, I wanna take that and yeah. kind of go into my, my next question here is, as someone who's making a decision, per, uh, decision uh, to purchase one of these products, um, or hopefully all of them, actually, because I, I, right now I just want to take all of them home with me on the plane um, and play with it myself, but what is kind of, as we look at them, what is the investment in terms of, you know, is it a product once you learn and you master it, um, it's done, or does, as the child uh, grows and they develop on other educational levels, how does this product grow with them? So if you guys want to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, I, I, I see it very much as a, you know, like the adage of teach a man to fish, right? It's the, um, once you get sort of, what we're trying to do with coding creators is teach those fundamental building blocks, um, logic, deductive reasoning, um, critical thinking, problem solving. Once um, that sort of sets in at an early age, we think those are foundational skills that, are kept, that will carry through well beyond um, your school years and hopefully throughout your life. And I don't, um, they, they're very simple products to grab onto, intentionally so, because they're for preschoolers, but uh, there's a lot of power in what they can do in terms of teaching some of those skills. And I know that it, uh, what you do in a coding creator carries through to Botley, carries through to Artie, obviously, carry through to something um, like the Cano product as well, yeah. Yeah, I think these products are just a really great foundation in building blocks of the coding with coding critter, critters for four plus and then Botley for five and Artie for seven and Cano, I mean, is open for a lot of ages too, which is mm -hmm. incredible. And I think the most important thing about Artie is that we're really sparking the interest. We're really sparking that curiosity and getting engaged And what is coding. I can do this, I want more. And we want them to continue that love for learning and coding beyond just just Artie. So mm -hmm. that's just an involving and lifelong mm -hmm. learning process. So, so what, what we've sought to do in, is create a, an open platform. So uh, that's kind of vague and abstract and techy, so maybe I'll try and ground it in, in something real. Like, um, so obviously you, you get our Harry Potter coding kits, you open it up, um, it's going to be like home shopping network now. Like, um, <laughs> and um, you know, inside you have all the pieces you need to build your own magic wand, right? But the componentry and the board inside um, can be repurposed, can be put inside anything else. And so you know, an amazing project we've seen, obviously you can cast spells on a screen, you can do Wingardium Leviosa, you can make feathers flow, float and flames flow and other things that start with F. But, um, <laughs> The, the, the hack that we loved is we, we had a, a kind of a more sophisticated teenager um, take the sensors in here, uh, hook them up uh, to an API, uh, the Coinbase API, um, 
programmed it to, to make the wand vibrate every time the price of Bitcoin went above a certain <laughs> wow. level. Wow. And then uh, did a wand gesture to buy and a wand gesture to sell. Wow. Right? Fantastic. So, and we, so that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Like gestural control of the world around you. And people like are turning on and off their lights and unlocking their doors. So, you know, to the point of, it's like you, you, you could start by, you know, having a, a critter who you love, who you tell a story with, who rolls around on the floor, and then you, then you could ha hack him or her mm -hmm. to do something yep. else. You could, you could change it because these are all technology products and we're teaching you how technology works. So mm -hmm. it's this lovely loop. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Loop. Loop. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what I love about all this is while the intended audience is for youth, that these are things that we can sit down with the children today and learn right along with them. Like I can see myself going back to visit my family and sitting down with both my 10 year old and four year old nephews and enjoying these in different ways and learning along with them. So I think it, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is it creates creativity all together, but then the parents, the, the adults are all involved in, in that learning process with them and can continue to support and grow. And it also changes a little bit of that family dynamic of leveraging technology for all educational purposes. Um, so we're, we're getting close. These sessions run fairly quickly. So um, I want to give our panelists one last moment to say any kind of final comments, thoughts you have around coding and the use of toys and play for creativity and, and that kind of stuff as, as we wrap up this session. So whoever would like to go first, please. I, I just think that if we could spark and infuse problem solving and creativity and also embed in confidence in it, we are are basically evolving the learning process and, and sparking a new community mm -hmm. for kids to become involved in and through all of these products and RD2 that we are making it accessible and relatable. And I think that's the most important thing that everyone can do this, that everyone can be a coder and also become a creative problem solver in, in, the, in the process. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, with coding critters, just to touch on the, the parent aspect that you talked about before, um, the, the parental involvement is intentional with something like coding critters. When you have a storybook, it's very much like a before bed activity where you're reading a storybook and you might play around with the coding critters as well. And for that reason, we also made it screen free just because that's appropriate, we found at that age. Um, and we're about making lifetime learners. And we feel something like Coding Critters or Botley, Artie as well, um, helps spark that interest, like you said, and, and um, really get children to think critically and, and um, mm. creatively. Um, maybe, I'd, maybe I'd close. Does anyone have any que questions? I'd close on a question and an answer, maybe. Just, yes, yeah. you, you, sir, in the back. I've got my outside voice. You've got a good voice. You've got a good stage yeah. voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but with, with all the things you guys are describing, I'm wondering what your question is on are our educators ready? As a former math teacher, I frequently saw fellow teachers that weren't ready to teach real math. Right. That's a really good question. Yeah. So we need to keep it brief because we just hit time. So okay. real quick answer um, before they get the hook out after us. Are educators ready? Um, I, I think educators are ready. I think the gap between generations at the moment can seem very wide because of how quickly technology has progressed in the last few decades, uh, and how different we are in some ways to our kids. But some things remain the same, which is that if you want to learn and create, you need to be in a space of trust and warmth and openness and also challenge. And I think all teachers, great teachers, good teachers, aim at those things. And if you aim at those things and incorporate the right tools, um, the kids will naturally gravitate to all of them. 
and you can facilitate and learn with them, and that learning together may be even more effective than the learning I had in school, which was sort of dictated to me from on high from a pew. And that learning to get, so, so paradoxically, educators may be generational, um, somewhat, I wouldn't say ignorance, but delay for some of this stuff could end up being very beneficial because it will put the students in this place of, of creative confidence and collaboration with the teacher. Um, and with that, okay. I'm okay. going to uh, ask yes. you all to take uh, more questions at the back of the room. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.